What's up, gardening friends? Jeff here at Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Are you good? I hope you're good. I am great. And the reason I'm zoomed in so close on everything is because I forgot to film an intro when I started vlogging this week. And if you see anything else than these bromeliads, then you're gonna know everything that happens this week. So, well, I don't know what, I don't know what now. I guess I'll just get on with the vlog. Okay. All right. Moving on now. No, I said it's time to move on. Move on. Before I forget, here's this week's project. Have a lot. There's a pile of furniture over there. All the stuff that needs to be put away and reorganized. It's supposed to get very cold, like dropping around 30 degrees here in several days. So got to get it done. At the very least, I need to have room to bring the orchids in, but I would prefer to have everything set up and ready to go. So gonna be fun. Actually, it's gonna be super boring. I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not going to bring you guys along for the cleaning part. I'll just be like, hey, look, here's the before and after. Okay. It's not done. Still plenty to do there, but uh, there's a respectful path here. I still figure out what to do with this car, though. Yeah, yesterday was a lot of organizing things. But uh, yeah, I need to go to Lowe's and get insulation. Foam insulation board I'm going to put down on the ground. So, the dilemma here. This, the plan here is this goes down on the ground, the pots go on top of it, the keeps the cold from making the pots cold. The ground in the grow room's made out of concrete, so it's very cold and it's, you know, right up against my uh, driveway. I thought about just using this stuff. I have this under the aquaponics tub, but it is very pliable and squishy, so the weight from the pots on it is going to end up blocking off the holes for drainage. That's not going to work. I could put 2x4s down and straddle the pots on top of like some parallel 2x4s, that would work. That seems unnecessary. So I think I might just get some of these guys. And this would work. I like that it has this slick surface, this will be easier to sanitize. Hmm. By sanitize, I mean like, you know, rinse clean and whatnot. Uh... Just realized I'm not sure this is gonna fit in the SUV, but <laughs> I guess we'll figure that out. Hope it's not too windy outside. Okay, so that fits, but uh, not leaving me much room for my head up there, <laughs> and uh, not very good visibility. It's gonna be a tense drive home. Okay, uh, this actually kind of works out. I got my own little styrofoam hat here. I can't, I have no idea what's happening behind me, but yeah, okay, not as bad as I thought it would be. So now I'm home. I need to clean out my wheelbarrow because it's supposed to get down to 37 tomorrow, so I'm going to bring my orchids inside tomorrow. Uh, the load of night's like 46. I know that seems really cold, but it's been warm. It's one night. They will be okay. Uh, there's all, they're also surrounded by concrete that's heated by the sun and a swimming pool. The water's fairly warm and so not worried about them yet. But I want to talk about this moss. I bought this moss and I asked the people, I said, is this living or is it died? And they said, oh, it's died. You know, people don't usually sell live moss packaged like this. And I was like, yeah, I know. I thought it was kind of weird. But the moss was green and vibrant and looked very alive when I bought it. And if it were dyed or painted, then... Why did it turn brown after I opened the bag? That doesn't make much sense, does it? I mean... Although you'd think if it were alive, then it would say... Something in here about, like, taking care of it. I don't know, that's just weird, isn't it? Wouldn't you think it would stay green if it were dyed or painted? Why would it turn brown? I don't know, well, it's garbage now, I'm not... I'm not using that, so... Going into the yard waste and the recycling. But yeah, I need to get the wheelbarrow cleaned out because this is what I pile my vandas in when I move them in. And I have some pots here because I need to pull some plants out of the ground and get them ready to bring in. Did I mention I bought a heat gun? It's going to be some fun projects coming up with this guy. Ultimately, my goal for today, today being Monday, is I need to get this whole area 
cleared out so I can set the aquaponics tub back up. I have to put that styrofoam insulation down first and uh, get things ready to start moving plants in because the low tomorrow night's 37. So the orchids are coming in, the adenidia palms, heliconias, anything that is truly, truly tropical is coming in. I need to figure out how to get the car out too because it, uh, it, it's, it won't start. So I'm going to need to charge the battery. Fine! All right, went in, just slid into neutral and pulled it out. Now, get that battery charged. Red to red. And where's, there's just like a chunk of metal in here. The other one goes on. I think this is it. If I'm wrong, then you know, you just blow up. No big deal, right? I'm gonna set it to 40 amps. I'm gonna trickle charge it. For 120 minutes. Why isn't anything happening? Uh oh. Yeah, apparently, someone unplugged my extension cord. Look at that! So much space. So much room for activities. So, I uh, guess I'll get the leaf blower out, clean the floor off, and throw down the, the insulation. Okay, so now that that's done, you can kind of see the white outline from where the pond used to be. I think I'm just gonna move it forward a little bit and maybe that way just a just a smidge because i don't have to do it right now first thing i put down the insulation don't i all right i think i have this laid out how i like it all right i got that set up i went ahead and i pulled that piece of the foam board off the ground because i realized that the vapor barrier can't extend past where those little tubs are and these lights right here so it was a little nonsensical to have it there right now so this is set up, switch things around a little bit so I can get to the drains better this year. So much more room there. I need to fill it up, scrub it out, drain it, and give it a good cleaning, and then uh, start the cycle on it to move the fish back in. But that's, that's still several weeks away from moving the fish in, but I need to get it up and running. This is a lot of water. It takes a while to get it cycled and to um, soften it and lower the pH. This is going to take hours. I'm just gonna keep adjusting the liner make sure it's not wrinkled as it fills three hours later still filling up i'm using this as an opportunity to go ahead and fix up the lighting i used to keep a compact fluorescent inside this fixture and i use these top lighting these are actually photography light bulbs 85 watt super bright huge bulbs they use 85 watts of electricity and i have these led super bright cree led spots that are uh, more of a full spectrum. And I think I'm gonna swap out, there's a compact fluorescent, tiny little, it's actually a reptile bulb, a UVB bulb in that one. And I, I can't imagine that's doing anything for any of the plants because it's so far away from everything. So I'm gonna swap that one out with one of these Cree spotlights too. There we go. Yeah, that needed to come out. This These lights have only been on for a few minutes and that was piping hot. It practically burnt my fingers taking it out from being on for a couple minutes. This bulb was no good anymore. Fluorescent bulbs, you know, the gases in them and whatnot, you really, if you want to be effective for your pets, you know, if you're using them for fish or for reptiles or for your plants, they have about a 10 month life on them. This one's well over a year old. Oh, feels weird to be sitting over here again. I went ahead, I got my chemicals in here. Aquari uh, aquarium powder that you use to neutralize your pH, neutralizing meaning bringing it to seven. And uh, the water's cold. The groundwater's, you know, probably 60 degrees around there so it's taking a long time to dissolve i put in a 5,000 gallon per hour pump in there to help stir it up that'll run all night i also now th the water's been dechlorinated i threw in i had an extra filter running in the aquaponics pond outside so that's in here to help get the bacteria going i probably should have waited until tomorrow for that uh, but yeah, i didn't i don't know i just didn't take into account that the water's gonna be so cold that the chemicals are gonna take a while to dissolve. I have shelves to go in the back that have always been there and I want to get more shelves so I have shelves along each side. Huh. And I just realized that I don't have a video ready for tomorrow or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. And if I record outside after I brought the plants and it's made pretty obvious what I was doing this week so I'm gonna have to figure out some way to trick y'all or film four videos and edit one and release it tomorrow. 
while bringing my plants in. Uh, tomorrow's are gonna be tricky too, but I'm glad this is done. But the next day, water started to clear up a bunch. I took the other pump out because it was actually like projecting water out. And I was like, I'm not able to tell if there's a leak or if it's just from water droplets coming out. You can kind of see that right here, but it's dried since I turned that other, so I took the, I took the big pump out and then this started to dry out. So I don't think it was a leak. It is time to go ahead and move the orchids in. First, I need to clean the shelf off. And then I'm gonna start hauling them in and probably also the heliconias. Done with that, at least for today. I went ahead and I brought in everything that I didn't think would be happy with 37 degrees, even though I doubt it's going to get quite that cold. Still doesn't seem quite worth the risk. I'm not leaving things like this. This is just where they need to go so that I have room to bring in the larger plants in a few days. Heliconias are not happy. This is why I just transplanted though, but it was looking okay yesterday. So hopefully that dirt will warm back up and it'll perk back up okay. Got my gramatophyllums, some of those fowls from the party. I'm not bringing all of them in. I don't need all those fowls. They're, if they seem special to me, I brought them in. The others, I'm probably just going to give those away. I have lots of room left in this orchid stand, but uh, I don't have the pots that fit. So hopefully I'll be able to do something about that. Some things in flower, like the zygopetalum here. I'm going to actually probably just do a separate video that will come out next week, going over the orchids, but uh, things are looking okay. Even even the sherry baby's got some flowers on it. Ugh, so glad to have this done, at least this portion. This is a tedious part, and I hate it. So I'm glad that they're at least in. Today's pickle is trying to figure out a shelving situation for the aquaponics tub. I have this bamboo shelf. It's actually not a shelf. It's a side panel from my old tiki bar. And it almost fits. I mean, so close to fitting. But it doesn't. I could modify it. The more I think about it, though, there's going to be a lot of water vapor getting on this and dripping back in. And I don't really know what it's been treated with and whatnot. So even though this was the most appealing idea to me, I liked that it was narrow and it goes all the way through there. I can put a lot of stuff on here. I just don't think it's the best idea. So I need to find something plastic that's gonna fit in here. I could build something out of PVC, but I'm kinda running short on time here with projects for the week because there's a lot going on getting the plants ready to move in. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why aren't you, what are you doing? You need to come back to your cage. Come on. Yeah, come on. There you go. Went to Lowe's because I also need mulch. Picking up, I have 18 bags here. Got my shelf picked out, light bulb. <sighs> Fun stuff, right? Here's what I picked up. These were the longest shelves I could find that were reasonably priced. For whatever reason, trying to find 48 inch plastic shelving not that easy. The stuff I was able to find was hundreds of dollars. Pretty dumb. Uh, but I found this one, 42 inches, and it's narrow. It's only 16 inches deep, so that's good. Only downside is there's no holes on the shelves, but that's not that big a deal. I can drill some holes and make it work. So I'm going to go ahead and toss this together. Okay, well, just as I expected, not a perfect fit. There's two more shelves, but I just want this to be level with the top of the aquaponics tub. So it's too high with three. The issue here is that these pieces, each end is a different size. So I can't just cut them. With this one, I was able to just cut them and it fit just fine. So I think what I'm going to do is there's little legs down here in the base. I think what I'm gonna do is take those little leg pieces out and cut these pieces to raise it up just the right level. Problem with that though, is the cuts are gonna be really, really squeaky clean because I don't want anything puncturing the liner with weight on top of it. So I might even take the heat gun and uh, smooth out the cuts. Well, we will see.
Hey, it's the next day. I got very frustrated and quit on this last night. Because the legs just, I wasn't getting clean cuts. It's very, 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 very cheap plastic. This whole thing was like $25. Uh, so getting it to the right height was very frustrating. And then I realized today that I can just push this shelf up and down. It doesn't actually seal on here like it's supposed to. So I flipped it upside down. I drilled holes in the bottom shelf so that water can get through it so the whole thing doesn't float. I haven't drilled this one yet, though, because I kind of like the idea of the top being able to float. Only thing I do not necessarily like is that with it upside down, I could actually probably flip it, but there's this ledge here. That's kind of a good thing and a bad thing, because last year there were some issues with things tipping over, so it'll hold them up, but it's also going to retain water. But I can also put this at a very slight angle, and the water will run back into the aquaponics tub. The, you know, that's why it's aquaponics. Water needs to recirculate through. Um, but the problem is that these shelves, they still kind of have some give and take to them. They still move up and down some. They'll float, which is nice. Sometimes I fill this all the way up. You can kind of see the line there. I'll fill this up as high as I need to. Right now it's not completely full because I'm adding things to it, so I need to allow room for displacement. So, in theory, if this floats, then the height doesn't even matter. It'll just go where it needs to, kind of like a floating dock. I don't know if I trust that, though. So, uh, I'm going to put hose clamps underneath the level. I'm going to raise it up and put those there. These aren't big enough. I'm just showing you so you know what I'm talking about. And um, I'm probably going to use the screw-on clamps, not the pinch clamps. And I will also probably put some gaskets in here, because that'll really hold it in place, too. Finished putting this together, uh, it is missing a leg. Missing the leg because I chopped it to pieces <laughs> and uh, destroyed it. So actually, it's still kind of holding tight though. It's just, you know, don't put anything too heavy on there. Should be fine. I think it looks kind of cool like that. I'm going to say I did that on purpose because I'm an artist. Not really though. Also, I found instructions. So... That would have been nifty a long time ago, but uh, I, they snapped together no problem. I went ahead and added some of these Indian almond leaves in here. They help soften the water. They add tannins and help acidify things. It need a lot more than three of these for five or seven hundred gallons. But it just helps because this is all such fresh water. Get a little bit of extra stuff in there, even though that dirty filter, not really dirty, but process filter, established filter is running. I added two or three fish in here just to keep the bio load going so that in a few weeks the water will be safe to put the rest of the fish in here. Unfortunately, one of the ones I caught happens to be like probably the most shy koi I've ever had. I never see this fish ever. I'm keeping a close eye on them, watching their breathing. The water outside is very, very cold. And in the aquaponics tub, it's about 65, which is still... Too cold for aquaponics, but uh, it's fine for koi and goldfish. That's not a big deal for them. Hopefully I'll be able to get the water heated up to about 75 once everything is set up and heaters are running and all that fun stuff. So, uh, I just noticed that this piece of PVC here looks like it's not balanced properly. There's a slight angle to it, and that bothers me. It's not safe. So uh, I'm letting some of the water out because right now it's too heavy for me to lift it and uh, have to correct that. It's not worth having the risk of that snapping. So sorry, water. All right, so I got that fixed. I think I had drank down about 50% of the way and I moved the legs so that they're at a slight angle coming up. This is a garage, so the floor is sloped. So the support needs to be going this way. I have to wait to fill this back up though because I just moved these fish in here and they're not going to appreciate being moved into this new water and then having 50% of the water changed in the same day. That's too much for them, so I'm going to leave it alone for now. And actually, this filter is going to do a better job keeping oxygen levels high in here with the water lower, so I think, I think this worked out just fine. Time to go ahead and get things cut back because when I move these in, these annuals aren't going to survive. They're just going to attract pests and they'll decay and cause problems, so I need to cut those out. 
And then I need to behead the banana because I can't move it with all that foliage on it. It's no big deal. It'll grow new leaves. I'm going to cut the top off of that guy and get it ready. And uh, pull the crotons out of the ground and... Yep, fun stuff. Done. Got everything pulled out. There is way too much perlite in this mix. Which might explain some of the problems I was having. I just didn't notice because the soil was so covered by the impatience. There's still one little clump in here that I haven't been able to quite get out. Go ahead and just get my fingers under there and rip it out. There we go. Done with you. You can also see the soil was a little bit too high here. You want your dirt with these palms to be just kind of where the angle of the trunk starts to come back down. If they're planted too deep, they can rot and die. That's really more of an issue with the foxtails and the adenidias, and it's okay for a few months, like during the summer. It's not going to kill them, but it's not great. And this is how they're in here. So they're actually inside of a pot, inside of these pots, so that I can just pull them, pull them out when it gets cold. So those are ready to go for tomorrow. Then I did the same thing over here. There's a teeny tiny little baby pine tree growing, and I decided to leave it because of cute. It's just cute, so not the smartest thing to do, but I don't want to kill the baby. So it can stay for now. And I don't think I'm going to show this part because YouTube will probably demonetize the video, but using a machete here and I'm going to go ahead and cut the top off of the banana tree. There we go, that's done now. This needs to be an even cut so I need to go through it and do a nice smooth chop. That uh, It's really pretty simple. There we go. Smooth cut. Oh, that I just put a giant cut in. Whoops. Don't play with these, these are not toys. I'm just saying that so that my video does not get demonetized for showing weapons. Stupid. I'm moving the pumpkins. Oh no! You lost your ugly little stem. Time for these to go to the front porch. Oh, I forgot. I did repot the uh, that thing, the elephant ear, and I just forgot to. I'll show you. It's not that exciting. Do I have the skills to push a wheelbarrow full of pumpkins with one hand? Probably not actually going okay. What are you guys doing? Ugh. I don't know why I made that noise. That wasn't even heavy. So I potted this up just the same way I did with the Heliconias last week. Same mix. Everything. It's in the last Saturday's video. At the end of the video if you haven't seen it. And I cut the tops off of them. Encourage their roots to push out and they still need some cleaning up but pretty easy. Basic stuff. I don't think I mentioned that it's supposed to be 29 degrees. Saturday. That's why this is happening. Come on. There we go. Uphill a little bit. But uh, that's gonna kill back most of the annuals, especially the impatience. So there we go. One last look at all the glory. They've eaten my path. Like, very much eaten the path. I planted these. These are the super dwarf or the elfin mix and uh, 8 to 12 inches is what they said, but this is, they're much bigger than that. Like, there's, I'd say these are a good 30 inches tall. They look pretty good though, don't they? The front porch. Never really showed this off. Got my hanging baskets with some terenias, a calphas. These planters right here, right there, and right there. Those are going to the backyard uh, in the wintertime. This guy's kind of dry. I need to check the sprinklers. But, uh, yeah, this is all getting changed out, too. There's some spooky ghosts hanging up there. Aren't they spooky? Okay, it's the next day. You know, I've been sitting out here, sipping my coffee. My iced coffee. It's iced. And I've been trembling, and my hands kind of hurt a little bit. And I was like, that's weird. It's, I, you know, the forecast yesterday said the low today was 48 degrees yesterday or just you know the last clip you saw in this video it was 80 degrees <laughs> like okay so i'm just cold at 48 because it was 80 degrees yesterday and i think okay i need to take my phone out check the weather and see what's happening tomorrow so pull it out to check that and then it pops up on my screen it's 33 degrees outside right now so that's why i'm freezing cold 
uh, they were way off, so, um, I was gonna be moving plants tomorrow, looks like I'm moving them right now instead. And then as soon as I'm done, I think I'm gonna go to the hardware store and get a fire pit, because I am freezing. It is so freaking cold. It is so cold. Oh my goodness. And what really sucks about it is that it's only supposed to be cold for, like, three days, and it's going to warm back up into the 70s. I hate moving my plants in so soon. But this isn't that soon. Many years ago, the plants would have been inside the end of September or early to mid-October, so this is still later than normal. But, man, sucks. Oh, well. So now I need to get this cleaned up, and I remembered in the springtime I tied all these clearance trellises together with zip ties and they're supported through the base of these pots these two on the end stay out all winter the one in the middle with the banana comes inside so i need to kind of deconstruct all of this and get moving Ugh. so uh, i had to move the car in order to go ahead and get the plants in the garage and it would barely start so took it on a quick drive just to help get the battery charged back up it's not going to be a very good charge from like four miles of driving but at least it'll start again when i'm done and need to put it back so it's not sitting in the middle of the driveway and uh it's nice sitting in the heat for a minute it feels very nice in here you think i can fit both of these adenidias on there at one time i don't but uh let's try Kinda of gotta rock this back and forth, loosen that root ball up. What am I doing? I am not gonna be able to do this with one hand. What is wrong with me? Barely did it. They fit. Why is everything zoomed in so close? Don't understand that. Okay. Let's go. Well, isn't that just frickin' adorable? Hey, cute little palm tree. I know you're not supposed to play favorites with your children, but uh I like the one on the left better. And how nice this one's grown. Gonna come in here and cut out. There's some weeds back here. This, The back of this was facing the aquaponics tub in a spot I couldn't get to. So I see those weeds, need to pull them out. This justicia, I think it's called like margarita lime, or maybe it's limelight, I'm not sure. It's a... I like the flowers. I don't like the growth habit on it, so I'm gonna cut that way back. And then, uh, this Pacistachys. I always call these Justicias in my videos. This is Pacistachys Ludia. The Ludia. Gold. Yellow. Uh, yeah. It's looking amazing. Like, look at that. It looks so good. So I don't think I'm going to give that a trim back quite yet. As far as the palm is concerned, some of the leaves are a little bit twisty up top, back there, which does bother me a little bit. I'm not seeing any yellowing or spotting. But, uh, there's potentially some deficiencies happening here, so once this is moved in, I'm gonna give it, you know, a week to dry out. Then I'm gonna hit it with magnesium and potassium, just to make sure that that's not a deficiency developing up there. So, yeah, for now, I'm gonna get this cleaned out and move it. This guy's looking really good. I ever told you guys how much I love this dolly hand truck? You can use it as a normal hand truck. It has this little thing you can put down on it so it's at a nice angle, or you can fold it out so it's like a long cart. It's so nifty. Supposedly it can handle 800 pounds, but whenever I put the banana tree on it, the tires pop, so that's why I'm trying to save the banana for last, even though it can't go last. That's a whole other thing that's really not worth explaining, but just things have to go in the garage in a certain order, but love this thing. So nifty, you can just kind of push and pull and I can just push I can just push the palm tree back into the garage no strain on the back a little bit of strain getting it onto the cart that's that's true I just thought this was a better angle to give a better idea of how big this is that's the garage door there's the palm tree I don't think I'm gonna be able to keep this inside much longer making some progress only issue I'm seeing is that the canopy on this Robolini is so massive that it's really shading these adenidias. I'm gonna have to do some fine tuning and adjusting, obviously, as things go. For now, I need to just get the plants into the garage. It's only been about 12 hours since I cut the top off this guy, 
already have new growth. So that's why I was saying I wasn't worried about cutting its head off. I actually may end up cutting it even lower. But uh, what I was getting at, or what I was going to record here, is that this just happened. Need to fix that. That's not going to work. So I started to move this areca palm in and notice there are mealybugs all over it. I've been spraying for the past six weeks, prepping things, trying to make sure that there's no bugs in the plants because once these things get moved inside, uh, I can't really spray them with anything harsh because the aquaponics tub is there and, well, harsh chemicals will kill the fish. So, I'm thinning out the inside of this areca palm. I've cut a ton out of it so that air can move through and the mealybugs don't have as much hiding space. But the things are still pretty clogged up in here. This might take me a minute. Now probably, I don't know, I want to go ahead and spray this down, but I really shouldn't since it's going to be right over the aquaponics tub. I might try beneficial predators this year. We'll see. That was a drastic prune. I normally don't like to prune them before I pull them in. I usually prune them when I bring them out because under artificial lighting they need every bit of chlorophyll that they have to absorb light, but this needs to be open. Air needs to be able to move through it. Light needs to be able to move through it. It'll make a less hospitable environment for the mealybugs. And I actually kind of like being able to see the big canes, to be honest. Not so bad. Now I just have to get this in the garage without breaking that pot. Fingers crossed. It's one of my favorite pots. A few problems. These areca palms have grown so much. I don't think they're going to fit in here next year. They barely fit this year. So this is the one I thinned out. This one I hadn't since they're right next to each other. I am going to go ahead and thin the inside out on this one, leaving just the larger canes that have the rings on them. These are pushing my Vandas. I don't actually, that doesn't bother me that much because having the greenery around the Vandas is going to help maintain a higher relative humidity. But it's also reducing the amount of light they're getting. So I'm probably going to end up having to do something a little bit different with my Vandas. Oh wait, I forgot they're on a pulley. Nice, it's been so long. Completely forgot that I had rigged this up. String goes up there. I can lower this down a little bit so they have a little bit more breathing room. It's kind of caught up on a branch there. Yeah, I can't loosen that with one hand, so I'll get back to that later. Okay, yeah, that's still not really working, but it's fine for right now. I'm going to end up doing something different with the Vandas because since I moved everything, this is not centered anymore. I, I originally had this rigged up so I could just pull that rope, lower it down, soak them all at the same time and pull them back up. But uh, since I had to make more room for filming and whatnot, that's not working. That's okay. I, that's an easy thing to figure out and I don't have to do it right now. Also, I have been trying to get this banana onto a furniture cart for like four, four, this is four, four years now. I don't know how I managed to do it this year, but I did it so I can move it. So happy about that. And now that the areca palms are moved in, I can go ahead and move my orchids over because the orchids always go right here. I put down another piece of the styro insulation board. That's what it says on there. Whatever. Oh, I just realized it's the opposite direction of the other ones. Ugh. Am I going to try and fix that? It's okay doesn't matter. It reeks of gas in here. I had to move these gas cans and I didn't see any gas spill anywhere but the fumes just from like moving the cans very very intense. Slightly concerned so I turned the circulation fan on. I don't know what that is. I don't want those fumes in here with the water and the orchids. Ugh. So I guess I can go ahead and move my orchids over now. Usually my bamboo palms go right here but I decided I'm not bringing them in this year. They're old. I've had them a long time. They're not looking great. I can repot them and do all kinds of things with them. It just isn't worth it to me because they're fairly easy to come by and relatively cheap. So I'm just letting them go. And they are mealybug magnets. And I've been dealing with these mealybugs for like two years now. So anything that's like 
super, super prone to mealybug infestations. Excuse you, I'm trying to talk here. Do you mind? A little bit windy. Uh, anything that's prone to mealybug infestation, like, that attracts them, I'm not really messing with this year because it's just gotten out of control. I'm so sick of trying to deal with those things. Yeah, there's still a lot of stuff to bring in. But all of the super, super crazy tropical things are in except for the smaller hibiscus and the crotons and then, well, all my succulents and kitten. Okay, I actually still have a lot of work to do. Goodness, the Nepenthes were out here last night and one of my Vandas I found fallen in the bushes. I probably dropped it when I was moving them a few days ago. Looks okay though, desiccated. That's fixable though. And then this... Gramina sedum, some, I don't know, it was a, like, dollar orchid I got, because, you know, it looks terrible. Whoops! I'm almost done just doing the little stuff now, and there's actually still a ton to do, and I still have to edit this video. That's going to be a challenge to get this out in time. I'm up for the challenge, though. Finally done. At least with as much as I'm going to get done today. My priority was to get everything inside that wasn't able to handle the 28, 29 degree temperatures tomorrow. So I did that. There's still stuff outside. There's the windmill palms, the mule palms, some of the Drixanias, and uh, the sago palm. But sorry, I'm winded. It's been a very labor intensive six hours. But things are in, pruned up. There's lots of tidying that needs to be done. Things are not where they're staying. I still need to get lights rigged up over here. It's normally actually very sunny over here, but it's cloudy outside right now. So, yeah, still lots, lots, lots to be done. But the dreaded, most horrific part, in my opinion, is moving day. And that's what today was. Today was moving day. And it's over. So, I'm grateful for that. So, hey, I haven't even stopped to look around in here yet. There's still so much, like, I have to rearrange things. I don't like, you know, things need to, height-wise, need to go like this. Uh, there's a word for that. My brain's dead, guys. I'm sorry. So, I'm gonna go ahead and... I'm wrapping this up. I feel like this is gonna be a long video. So, sorry if it is. Hopefully I included enough plant stuff to keep it interesting. Uh, I guess we'll find out when it's time to edit. This was an absolutely crazy week. Hopefully, things flow together well. And this is the start of the next five months. So, kind of exciting. I'm okay with it. Better than not being able to bring my plants in and just sitting around twiddling my thumbs all winter. So, I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment down below. I really like talking to y'all. You can follow me on Snapchat, Trop Plant Party. I'm on Twitter, Tropical Plant JC, and Instagram, Tropical Plant Party as well. And as always, keep on growing, everybody. Bye bye.